Hi, once again this is Ed from Exotic Blanks. Our last shipment from uh, John Underhill included a couple of um, blanks that are the Choya blanks, Choya cactus. And he's making them into a longer blank, a six inch blank, so I thought I'd do a quick video on how do you handle these things because they're cool when they're done. Basically you'll see your your um, blank will look like this. It's six inches long. It <clears throat> Take your tube, whatever size you're planning on making. I'm going to make a um, Sierra style, a diamond knurl. <clears throat> Mark this so that you have a little bit extra left over. I've got about, um, oh, maybe an eighth of an inch longer than the actual tube itself. And then take it over and cut it. And I will do that and be right back. If you've not seen Choya Cactus before, it has a hole in the center, and then that goes from one end to the other, obviously. So what I'm going to try to do is drill as close to that hole as possible. It's not vital that I hit it dead in the center, but it'll be pretty close, and that'll make for a nicer looking pen. If you look at this blank, you can see that the center of it is not in the center of the blank which is pretty logical because these things don't grow so that you can make pens out of them. So it makes sense for us to accommodate that by doing this turn between centers. This tube will end up going in there. As you can see, there's more than, well, maybe you can see, there's more than enough material there. Just a matter of trying to get it a little more centered if you're a perfectionist. And in this case, I prefer them when they're, when they're close to center. So. I just take that and hit it about the center of the green spot. And on this end, I'll do the same thing. Hit it in about the center of the, of the material. Lock down my lathe. And now I'm ready to turn between centers until I get it to the point where that is the center of the blank. Start at whatever spot looks like it's the closest around. Perhaps you can tell, stop for a minute here and show you what's going on. This step center is not yet contacting the blank and that's why it will spin freely fairly easily doesn't matter I just keep tightening it a little at a time until I get to the point where those engage if you wanted to you could drive it in there right away but that can crack the blank too whereas slow advance usually does not crack the blank. I'd rather not hit those teeth with my with my tool. I believe what I'll probably do is turn this around at the end.
Okay, that's good enough. Now I can take this off and mount it in my scroll chuck. As you can see, if you look at this now, that is centered. And so when I drill the hole, it will be in the center of that of the hole that's in the tray blank. There we go. Hole that's going to go in here for my pen is going to be twenty seven sixty fourths. That lines up perfectly with the hole that is left from the uh, step center so everything's good well, we don't want it to go anywhere near that fast to drill it that's better I go in about an inch at a time. Um, it doesn't make an awful lot of difference. Clean off the flutes so you've got some place for the and we're through now. <clears throat> okay, the next thing is to glue in the brass tube. Just so you can see what ended up, there we are, centered in it, centered in that end. Now it's just a matter of gluing in the tube and doing the normal turning. Okay, we have um, put a brass tube in it, uh, suitable for the diamond knurl. And now it's just a matter of turning it down to the appropriate size. As you can see, it's still got the one side that's a little bit larger, because that was the side that I didn't want to get too close to the uh, drive. And this side is a little bit smaller. Um, I'm turning between centers, so I have uh, drive here and, and the 60-degree um, uh, live center back here. And it's just a matter of turning it on and turning it. A whole lot faster.
The two ends have not yet been squared because that's something I do at about this point. So we'll turn it off and you can see what it looks like at this. As you can see, all the um, choya cactus is doing well. And this is the resin that John puts into it in multiple colors. So it's going to turn out to be a very pretty pen. But right now we need to do the uh, sanding on the two ends to square it off. I'll set that up and then turn this back on. As you can see here, there's a fair amount of where we can get light in there. There's a fair amount of distance to get back to the brass tube. So this will take a little while. The other side is very close, um, so that won't take long at all. So basically we'll put that on, turn this thing down. <clears throat> What I have made here is a uh, sandpaper disc. That's too fast. And that will sand down the, the blank. As you can see, there's a little bit of shine there, so I'm right at the brass tube. I'll give it one more turn. Look at something to identify that you're not, and just know how much more you have to turn off. That's all there is to that. And then on this side, um, this has got to come down about that much. So basically, I'm looking at this being three eighths of an inch long or thereabouts. Just a kind of a road mark so I know when I'm getting close. You can see we're just about at the um, at the brass tube there. Another couple of couple of rotations and it'll be right. Mm, just I'm just touching the brass. There we go. Now there's a nice shine to it. That's what you want. Okay, now we're back to do the final turning on it. When we turn this on, you can see that everything's nice and square. Nothing's vibrating. So, it will turn out to be a nice looking pen. We just have to finish it up here. Sharper. When it squeals like that, it just means that the tailstock is not tight enough. I'm not getting good drive. Very small turn of the tailstock solves the problem. And I also know that my bushings are older and have seen better days. So I don't intend to turn down to the bushings. Just about that far and now I need to get the measurement on one of my uh, components. I'll be right back. Okay, I've now got the caliper set for the size of the component that I'm trying to match. And I can just come back in here and see that it's not too far off. It's a little bit larger than that bushing <clears throat> on this side. <clears throat> It's that bushing is just about dead on. So I'll turn it a little bit larger than this and just about dead on on that side.
try to find the tool that was sharp. Here we go. Do a quick measurement here just to see how it looks. And it could come down a little bit. And that could come down a little bit too. So it could take a little bit more off of both sides. We're going to put a CA uh, glue boost finish on it. So it's going to add a little dimension to it. So. We'll take off just a little bit more, get it down close to those bushings, and then figure that the glue will build up just a little bit. On fine turning at the end, I like to use a smaller tool, have a little more control over it. I'll take off as much at a time. And that is about where I want it. <clears throat> I start sanding at 400 grit. Turn down the speed considerably. When you're sanding, you would like to see an even color. It's kind of a white because you're looking at the sawdust. You'd like that to be even all the way across. You see this spot here that's a little bit lighter? It means I haven't touched it yet. So it's a little low. That's what you're trying to do. Get all those spots out so that it's equal all the way across. You do that with your first grit, which in my case is 400. Pick what you like. Don't go much lower than 300, or you're just putting scratches in it that you're going to have to get out later on. But if you use your tool well, 400 is no problem. And once you've got it equal like that, then go to a 600. See there, you, all of this is uniform. You're not seeing any low spots. That's what you're trying to do. And there we go. Now it's just a matter of putting a um, glue boost finish on it. But as you can see, there's some white spots here where I've got uh, sawdust that's actually inside it. So what you want to do is either use a compressor and blow it out. I usually use be, uh, boiled linseed oil, BLO. <clears throat> I want that to dry off, so I'm I'm trying to put a little heat on it at the same time, just to show you what I'm doing here. Now all those places that were white are no longer white. You've taken off all the sawdust, and that's what you wanted to do. There's no real reason why you have to go both directions. I'm just trying to look at it and make sure I don't have anything that's going to pop out after I put a finish on it. 
but everything looks good. So from there we'll put the glue boost finish on it. Now when I remember it, I take off the bushings and put it on here just between centers. This does not need any pressure on it, so you're not going to break the blank because you're not going to put pressure on it. And put a glue boost finish on it. You can see it starts to slow down a bit because I don't have a lot of I'm going to touch that so it's got a little bit more drive to it. The thing about glue boost is the first coat you already start to see a shine. With most CA finishes it takes four or five coats before anything starts to happen. Glue boost it, it starts to shine right away. Humidity in here is 65%. The temperature is just under 70 degrees. So it's a little humid for doing this. It'll take a little bit longer for it to dry as we go from coat one to coat two. I'm willing to wait rather than use the um, accelerator. I will use accelerator toward the end, but on the first couple of coats, I like to see if I can get away without it. I don't think you can see it from the angle of the camera, but that has got a really nice shine line to it. Now before I go to the to the blue, slightly thicker, I will give it a quick shot. And yes, it is dry to the touch at that point. <clears throat> and we'll put the layer of blue on it, realizing that I just put accelerator on there. <clears throat> it's going to dry pretty fast when it hits. Now there are a number of ways of using Blue Boost and Mark Dreyer, who is the first one who used it, has his method, which gets it done right away. I have my method, which gets it done tomorrow. And we both get nice results. So I certainly am not critical of the way Mark does it. I just feel better about putting on a little, what I think is a little heavier coat. Again, everybody that I've talked to who uses it may have a slightly different method of putting it on. but we all get good results with it so it's kind of a do anything you want to and you're still going to come out with something you like which is very rare for CA coatings. That's it. That's ready to what I will do now is let that sit overnight and then come back and hit it with um, 600 grit when it's good and cured uh, and then buff it so it will turn out that will be the permanent look but as you can see just looking at it there it's a nice shiny blank that has turned into a nice shiny pen uh, and I will show you the finished product uh, I'll rush this one a bit it's 630 at night I'll give it an hour or two and then I'll come back and finish it up so Hopefully you'll be able to see it in the uh, video. We'll be back.